Yo, yo, it's your boy Simon, and this is the story of my sentencing and how the court almost took the rest of my life away from me. After spending an extensive chunk fighting my case in Cook County Jail, um, I had learned a lot about myself. I learned my tics. I had learned my... Uh, I had learned basically who I was as a person tenfold than I have all throughout my life. And one thing that was a anomaly to me is how much time I was going to get because I never knew what the court system truly had in store for me. When I first got incarcerated, or rather sent to jail, I didn't realize the severity of my case. I th thought it was an accident, which which it was, but you know the courts still look at it that way. Um, DUIs are frowned down upon in the state. There's 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 uh, picket groups that basically make sure that if you're a high profile case they will slay the fuck out of you and um as my county journey continued i was very naive to the fact my first set of lawyers that we had hired uh i think my family paid like five to ten grand retainer for these dudes and um after about a month of going to court this is my initial initial uh couple court cases after the discovery and everything uh, they had told me, they had told me, so we got your first offer. So I asked them, my first offer, you say, okay, um, at this point I was in a wheelchair. I was still out of it. I didn't realize the severity of my, of my whole case surrounding the, uh, the incident. So I tell them, tell me, they're like, I don't know. Uh, I don't think we should tell you this. I don't think we should tell you this. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean? You're my lawyers. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? Tell me how much time I'm facing. And then we work out some kind of deal or something. He's like, are you sure? I'm like, fuck do you mean am I sure? Yeah, tell me the fucking time, man. What the fuck are we paying you for? So this dude tells me. He tells me, all right, Simon, just get ready for this one, man. But um, you're facing 26 years in prison. My fucking jaw dropped. My body, literally had an out-of-body experience in that moment. This type of severity, I could have never expected. The court was literally trying to slay me, put me on a fucking pick it you know wave me around the fucking the corridors and say hear ye hear ye this guy just got fucking this is the picture child that if you do something wrong it doesn't matter what your past is who you are who you were you're going to get justice and uh at that point i was numb i didn't know what to think um my whole mind shut down i had spoken to my family later that day actually and i told them did you know the lawyers were saying that 26 years is the initial offer? I mean, at that point, I figured, what? how much better could it get? 20 years? 22 years? You know, if, if I was going down, I was going down for a long-ass fucking time. So I tell them, I'm like, you, you, you got to get rid of these dudes. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Keep in mind, at this point, being a young, naive, stupid 19-year-old, um, I was in the whole, I was in the whole mindset that, you know, this is, this is a mistake. I made a fucking mistake. I didn't mean to do this. Like, how much trouble could I be in? But not to downplay the consequences, I realize my actions are fucked up. I realize I made a bad decision to get behind the wheel. But being that young, I couldn't really fathom the, the extent of the severity of everything in that one moment. So I, I tell my family, I'm like, look, you got you to gotta fire these guys. We need some new lawyers ASAP. Otherwise, I'm going to go to fucking prison for the rest of my life. And my family says, okay, don't panic. We're going to get you some new lawyers, this, that, and the other. And sure enough, uh, they get me a new set of lawyers, okay? So my new set of lawyers, uh, I don't want to dox their names or anything like this. But the reason why we had gotten these guys is because the initial call between my family and these guys, uh, these lawyers, was that they were able, they were trying to get me boot camp. They said it was a possibility. Now, what boot camp is is basically a program that you go through. It's six months, and you do this six months program, which is basically a, a military style boot camp, which you run every day. You learn uh, discipline, etc., and that's how you serve your sentence. That's how justice is served. So, these lawyers they come on the scene. Uh, I had my first visit with them. I, I I won't forget this, and they tell me, you know what, Simon, uh, you know I think we could be able to get you boot camp. I think that is going to be the, uh, the, the end game of this. And uh, to my amazement, after hearing 26 years as opposed to boot camp, I'm like, uh, 
yes, absolutely. This, you know, this, this, this is a fucking new hope. Like my fucking, my heart started beating again. I was, I was fucking, I was feeling, uh, like there was hope again. So time passes on months pass by. I'm in the County at this point, my bond, keep in mind, they wouldn't lower it because I have family in Poland. So I'm fighting my case. Every month passes by. I see the court case continuation 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 non-fucking-stop continuation and the only thing these lawyers are telling me yeah you're gonna get boot camp yeah for the most part we can get you boot camp now keep in mind I was in a wheelchair for about four months in during my incarceration I had a compound fracture in my leg I had a uh, a broken arm um, so in, in the back of my mind is how the fuck am I gonna do boot camp but it didn't matter to me at that point I didn't care I completed the program. It didn't matter to me how I did it. I was going to do it. Little did I know is that you had to be in specific shape and uh, certain ailments would deter uh, you from getting boot camp. Also, that unless you got eight years or less, you weren't even eligible for boot camp. So as everything progressed, um, I fought my case. I got into a lot of fucking bullshit in the county. Got into more fights. You know, was embodying the whole... The whole Cook County uh, persona, which is basically not having your priorities straight, you know, hanging with the wrong crowd, doing shit that I shouldn't have been doing. But regardless, that story is not for today. So the lawyers were having meetings every three months at this point. Now, I spent just about a year in the county itself fighting my case. And spontaneously, one day, we go to court and... Uh, my lawyer tells me, well, we need to change a venue. We got to change your judge because your judge actually lost a loved one or is in the mix with somebody that has lost a loved one due to DUI. So we got to get you away from them. And I'm like, oh, really? Oh, oh, okay. So at this point, I'm asking him, so how much are the offering? He's like, ah, oh, don't worry about it. We're working on boot camp. So he never told me one time how much time that they were fucking offering. He just would refuse. He just kept talking about boot camp, boot camp, boot camp, boot camp. So the time progresses month after month, summer turns into winter, winter, snow, it starts turning back fucking warm again. I had a visit with these lawyers one time uh, during all this time and he had a, a relatively long conversation with me and it was a weird conversation too. It was uh, along the lines of, you know, if you had to do time and at this point I'm like, wait a second, hold on a second. What do you mean if I have to do time? You know, my young, naive mind was so set on boot camp itself that I couldn't even fathom doing any time. I mean, I was already doing county time, right? I was almost in there for a year. So I figured that that was, that was my sentence. Boy, was I fucking wrong. So about a year passes. I go to court one day. I figure like it's going to be any other day. And they tell me, they walk up to my bullpen. At this point, I was uh, I was rolled into into court with a wheelchair. At this point, because my leg, I had pain in my leg, so I asked for a wheelchair. And my lawyer comes up to me like, "Hey, Simon, so um, they're telling us you gotta either take a plea deal, or we're going to go to trial." I'm like, "Wait, wait, 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 wait. What do you mean trial? I thought we were gonna get boot camp eventually, right? Once I get better and everything." He's like, "Well." See, that's not on the table. My, my buddy shut down. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Was I lied to this whole time? Was it all a fucking uh, ruse? Was it all a fucking lie? Like these motherfuckers were stealing my money this whole time. So they tell me, uh, you know, we're going to try to get you the best deal possible. I'm like, whoa, 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 dude. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm screaming at him, dude, through the chuckle. There, there's like about 10 inmates behind me. They're all like, oh shit, damn. Shorty going to get a lot of time, bro. Shorty finna get smoked. Shorty's finna get fucked. And I'm like, man, shut the fuck up, man. Listen, man, you guys told me fucking boot camp, blah, blah, blah. You, you aren't delivering. I'm paying you thousands of dollars. We paid over $30,000 for these fucking lawyers, man. Out of pocket. This wasn't my money. This was my family's money. So they go downstairs to the prosecutor. Now, keep in mind, uh, two of the families that were included or involved in this accident actually wrote letters to the judge regarding me uh, and trying to get me a lesson sentence. They were trying to basically convince the judge that, you know, throwing somebody in prison 
over something like this, which obviously, don't get it fucking twisted. The consequences are great. I get this. But they were trying to basically give me some kind of probation, give me some kind of lesser sentence, something that was going to be not 10 years plus in jail. And I don't think none of that mattered. Because the lawyer, he comes back up and he says, so Simon, they're offering you uh, 10 years. You want to take it? I just look at him like, Basically, everything I said earlier went in one year out the other. This whole boot camp thing was a fucking ruse. These motherfuckers strung me along like a Pinocchio in a goddamn Disney movie. They knew all along I was never going to get boot camp. They knew it wasn't even a fucking possibility. Dude, this shit was all a fucking lie. So, I tell them I need to talk to my family. In the back of my mind, I'm like, dude, you know what? I'm going to trial. I don't give a fuck. I'm not doing 10 years in prison. There's no way I'm going to make it. There's no way I'm going to fucking survive this shit. Um, I was getting thoughts of, of, of God forbid, and if you need help out there, I'll sing the fucking suicide. I didn't see a way out. I don't know what to think. Just the darkest and deepest thoughts of my mind were fucking flowing through me, a rancid diarrhea. So I go down, I talk to my pops. I talk to my sister behind a fucking window. And uh, I tell them, so they're offering me 10 years, and they're like, we know. Now keep in mind, before this time, I have only seen my pops cry one time. And that's when my mom passed away. And he's behind the window just bawling. He's fucking bawling. He's like, we don't see no other way. I think you need to take the 10 years. If you go to, if you go to trial, you're going to face... The max sentence for this was 28 years at 85%. So I'd have to spend 85% of that 28 years. And uh, I gave in. I just gave in. I didn't know what to do. I'm like, tell me what I need to do. Tell me, please, what I need to do. Should I take this time? Because I didn't know what to do. Like, I couldn't make that decision for myself. It was, it was not a decision that I was capable of making at that young age. So, the bailiff comes in. He's like, okay, it's over. Let's go. Come back up to the lawyer. So, the lawyer sits down with me. He's like, so, Simon, what are you going to do? And I tell him, look, first and foremost, you're a fucking bitch. I call him everything under the book. You lied to me, you fucking shyster. This whole time you fucking told me I was going to get boot camp. You told me I was going to fucking be able to get a chance at life. And all along, you just lied to me. He's like, wait, wait, hold on a second now. Now listen here, man. Listen here, brother. Uh, According to the law here, uh, you'll be able to get good time. So you'll be able to lessen your sentence if you go to school, if you uh, enjoy uh, or you or rather you partake in certain events uh, at the at, at the prison. So before you know it, you'll be out. You'll do, you know, maybe three or four years. I'm like, good time. Exactly. What is that? So he explains to me what good time is. Right. And I'm like, OK, well, it doesn't matter. Fuck it. Good time. All right. I'll be out in fucking four or five years. I'll, I'll muster it up. I get a second chance at life. I'm here. I'm blessed. So let's do it. He put that paperwork in front of me. I looked at it. It said 10 years at 85%. Truth and sentencing, it's called now. I signed it away. Let's go. Let's get this shit over with, man. He tells me, don't worry. There's going to be much more life after this. You're still a young man. You know, with a good time, you'll be just fine. So I signed my fucking shit away. Right on the fucking dot, link, boom, plea deal. 10 years, 85% aggravated DUI. Let's go down south. So, not even a minute passes by. Judge says, okay, anything you got to say for yourself? And I tell him, look, I want to apologize for what I did. I never meant to do any of this. I start crying out of my fucking mind. I don't know, like, the family was there. My family was there. And I just tell him how I felt because I realized that this was it. This was the moment. If I don't say anything now, it's never going to be said. So I apologized. I said what I could at that moment without being flooded with tears. And they wheeled me off into a bus the next morning. And I was off to receiving, off to my first prison. That's when I transferred from the Cook County Jail to the Illinois Department of Corrections. Now I was a slave to the state. I was part of the property. I had a number. I don't have a name anymore. <laughs> I'll still remember that number like it's fucking yesterday. Everywhere you went, 
you were known only as that number. The first prison I go to, Centralia. I go to the counselor. There's a there's an orientation. I go to the counselor, and at this point, I'm still fresh in. I'm still kind of fucking you know traumatized from getting the time, but I'm learning to accept it. I'm trying to at least. So I go to the counselor, there's an orientation, so she explains what prison is, what it's all about, you know, the rules, the regulations, the differences between the jail and uh, prison, which it's two separate entities completely. And uh, so she's like, do you have any questions? I'm like, absolutely, ma'am. How do I earn good time? My lawyer told me that I could earn good time to lower my sentence. She's like, oh yeah, sure. Sure, good time is basically so and so. You you know, if you do take classes, if you take in industry uh, jobs, if you do uh, some kind of good deeds, you get time taken off your sentence. She's like, okay. I'm like, am I eligible? Can I start this now? She's like, sure. Let me take a look. She brings my name up on the computer. Okay, Simon. Um, she's like, well, Simon, uh, you know, you're not eligible for good time, right? Your case is an 85 percent case. It's the truth in sentencing. The law states you're not eligible for a day of good time at all. I just stop. I'm like, well, ma'am, ma'am, hold on a second. You got to check that again. My lawyer told me specifically I could get good time uh, in prison. He's like, well, if they fucking lie to you, you're not eligible for any good time. You got to do every single day in prison. You got to spend the next eight and a half years in prison. There's not a day sooner you can go home. The law forbids it. Reality starts to fucking hit me. The vision of my lawyer snickering in my background with my money in his hands. My family's money, rather, not mine. Knowing, lying to me, that I could never get good time to begin with. It was all a fucking ride. It was all a fucking ruse. The sheer shysting, the sheer deceit that I felt, this fading image of what I thought was reality. I don't know what to do. I just kept getting hit and hit and hit with more and more truths up until I came to the realization that I wasn't going to leave prison for the next eight and a half years. That was my new home. And either I accept it or I break. If you enjoy the content, if you got something from my story, hit that like, hit that subscribe, hit that bell. I also stream every night on twitch.tv slash everyone kills. Come through, ask some questions. I'm always willing to kick it. As always, stay good, be safe, make wise decisions. Nothing but love here. Until next time, peace.